guys, this is my take on ATAX FG. It's on my Echo One M28. I'll probably be reviewing this in a different video. It's a very useful camera flash system, but it's very difficult to paint because of this organic style of like all the shapes and stuff. So I'm going to try to do my best to show you guys how to paint this type of camouflage. All right, let's get started. All right, the pistol I'm going to show, be showing you guys ATAX on is a Sig Sauer SP2022. It's a spring powered pistol. It does all right. But I already painted all my other rifles at about the same time, so I didn't have a really different gun to show you guys with. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting this part of the gun. I'm not going to be painting the slide just because I like that kind of uh, partially painted look. So first what you're going to do, take the slide off the gun. Make sure you don't lose any of these parts. Also, I like the hammer not to be painted. I just kind of look like the black look about it. Alright, so now we have that. I'm going to make sure that's covering the safety, but probably going to move it when I paint it that way. I'll probably take this trigger assembly out too. Eh, nah, the trigger will look fine painted. Alright, so what we have is this. I have the mag out. I'm not going to paint the magazine or anything like that. What you want to make sure you do is there's a lot of grease on the slide part right here. Just because, you know, smooth operating or whatever, you should always make sure that your guns are properly greased. Take well-maintained stuff like that. But you are not going to want to paint grease because what you're going to do is you're going to paint over it. If the paint even sticks, it's just going to fall right off the moment you put the slide on. It's going to lead to a bunch of chipping, so you're going to stay away from that. So just make sure you really clean all this grease off because that's really going to make painting very difficult. All right, usually if you're going to paint, you're going to want to sand, you're going to want to scuff up a little bit. But I do have self-etching primer that I'm going to put on here, and the paint is also made specifically for plastic. Uh, what I would recommend is if I were you guys, I would definitely look into, I think I have like Krylon camouflage paint. It's a very nice flat paint. It's going to dry really quickly and provide really good adhesion to this plastic. It's, it's great. It's what I've been using on all my guns for a while now. Let's see, masking tape. Masking tape is a beautiful thing. This stuff makes it so much easier to paint guns because usually when you paint sniper rifles, if you're doing a full style camouflage system, it's going to you're going to want the whole gun assembled, but you're not going to want to paint certain parts like the trigger, the scope lens, all these things like that. So you're going to want to, all the parts that are involved in the moving, you're, like the whole slide mechanism, whatever it touches, you're going to make sure those are covered because you paint those and your mechanism is going to get super sticky. It's going to be incredibly difficult to use. So just want to line it up really clean right there. Still a little difficult because I didn't do a very good job of getting the grease off, but... Since I'm not actually painting this, it's not that big of a deal. As long as I can get this paint or tape to stick, we'll be good. Alright, so this is all taped up. You can see the front's not super, you know, it's just one little bit of tape in there to protect the very bottom of the slide. That's where most of the rubbing happens, so I figured just enough right there should be fine. The inside here, I'm not too worried about. When I pull the pistol back, or the pistol, when I pull the slide back, you're going to be able to see up here anyways. So I just wanted to be, have a little bit of paint that way, you know, it has a bit of a cleaner look. I did end up taping the trigger just because I, I, I don't want it wearing down. It would start to look bad after a little bit, so I'm going to keep that black. A little bit sticking out there. The slide is not perfect, but it is covering most of the moving parts, and the spray paint is not powerful enough to really, like, move the paints, or the tape, so it's going to be fine. I just folded the tape a little bit around here to try to make sure I got all these edges in. Push in a little bit more before I start painting. Well, other than that, we should be all set to go. Uh, I'll take you guys out to the garage and we'll get started. Alright guys, we're getting started painting the pistol to ATAX. What I have here, these are basically all the different colors they kind of had uh, of the camouflage paint. It's Rust-Oleum, not Krylon, my apologies. You're going to want to get most of these. I mean, based on what kind of environment, you might want to tweak, like maybe use more greens instead of tans. And then you definitely want clear coat. There's going to be a lot of, like, you're going to be grabbing the gun and stuff like that. It's going to rub off. You don't get clear coat. Make sure you get matte, not gloss. All right, so sorry about the one-handed filming here. We're going to start off with, let's see, but like a coyote brown kind of color. A pretty light tan for the base. You're not going to be able to see much of it later on, but it's going to provide a good earthy kind of tone for this whole thing. So for the first coat, you are not going to want to coat the whole weapon, you know, the entire thing, you're going to get drip paint, it's going to look terrible. Just a really kind of light spray because the paint is going to need something to grab onto. Some paints are going to do more well than others. You also got to keep in mind it's pretty cold where I am right now, so it's not performing the best. But yeah, just something like that. You're not going to want to go too much heavier than that. 
just something that's going to give the paint a place to stick. Just make sure you're kind of hitting most of the surfaces here. Sorry, I have mounts everywhere from when I painted my rifles. And oh, before I forget, when you're painting, you're not going to want to lay it on its side and do one side at a time. You will be able to tell you did that. There's almost going to be a visible seam of where the paint was, you know, where the first coat was when you flipped over the second coat. You're going to want to balance it on kind of a point where, like, there's no paint going to be going. Like, obviously, I put it upside down because that's where the slide's going to be. And also try to avoid putting too much paint in the magwell. So, this right here, the rifles, usually the polymer bodies have kind of a hole or something you could put them into. So, this is a. Let's see, where does that work? Right here. This is this, like this kind of clamp right here, clamped on the side of the table with an old t shirt over it to protect the clamp. All right, what you're gonna do is you're gonna give this probably about 20 minutes to get dry to the touch. You don't need it to be super dry, just dry enough, an hour if you're really trying to, you know, make sure you get the absolute best. I'm just trying to give you guys a quick tutorial, so probably about 20 minutes, and then we'll come out and put a second coat on it. All right, guys, so we've had this sitting for about 20 minutes. We've got a little, it's pretty dry, it's dry to the touch, so it's, it's fine to paint, put another coat on. This time we're actually gonna cover it, now that it has something to stick to. So you're gonna get, try to get the best even coat. It doesn't have to be perfect because we have about four or five more layers of paint that's gonna go on here. Just make sure you're getting all the little uh, indents and stuff. That way it looks good when you're finished because you will see it if you don't get it all. All right. Probably not a terribly good idea to paint when it's this cold out, but just doing it for the purpose of showing you guys how to get this camo done. I would have the heater running, but it makes too much noise. You guys wouldn't be able to hear the video. All right, so that's looking about acceptable. All right, you want to let that sit for about 25 minutes. Dry to the touch again is what you're going for because you don't need to be super dry. You want it to look a little mottled before the thing is finished. So, all right, we'll cut to the scene. All right, so now we have that second coat on the pistol. It's looking pretty good. I mean, it's got some spots where it's not completely covering, but it does the job. We don't need it to be completely covering. I mentioned that. It's gonna get mostly covered up anyways. We're ready to move on to the next step. All right, what I've done is I'll show you the stencils as I move on to the process. The first stencil you're gonna wanna do, just this really kind of wide tiger stripe stencil, but you know, just kind of a straight line more or less. And this is gonna be kind of difficult to show on camera, but what you're gonna do, is you're gonna hold it about an inch and a half away from the actual pistol and kind of spray pretty widely over it. What it's gonna do is it's gonna make like a really uh, vague, blurry stripe. And the color I'm gonna be using for this is very similar to the Coyote Brown we started with. That's what we started with. This is what we're gonna be putting on top of it. It's a more of a gray tan type of color. It's hard to describe, and I don't believe they have a name on it, but just slightly different. So let me uncap this real quick. See what I can do about positioning this to film. Okay, that's not going to work out very well. Okay. Okay. Well, I showed you guys basically just hold it about an inch and a half away from the gun. You want to hit it a few times, so all different sorts of angles, no particular pattern. You know, just this is going to provide a decent uh, start to our ATAX pattern, break up the base coat a little bit. All right, let's do that. After this, you want to let it dry about 20 minutes again. You don't want any other paint smearing into it, so yeah, 20 minutes to dry and we'll start the next coat. All right, the next coat we'll be using is a kind of a dirt earth brown. We're gonna get a really dark brown here. That's gonna give us the thin stripes that simulates the shadows of the twigs. This is gonna finish up uh, what is essentially the base color or coat of the ATAX FG system. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out a stencil that has similar lines to what the light brown use, but you're gonna have them a lot thinner. That way it fits inside these stripes. And what you're gonna try to do is find where you painted last uh, the bigger stripes and try to center this in those areas and that's kind of what you're going to want it to look like not too uh, defined by any means because in a second we're just going to mess with it anyways I'll show you what that what I'm talking about so I'm going to go around the gun try to find where you painted last you can add other lines on top it doesn't have to be exactly where you hit it the first time all we're trying to do is simulate the shadows when you're walking around the forest so 
Let me just finish this up real quick and I'll show you the next step. What you're gonna do next, this is the part that really starts making it look like Atex. You're gonna get like a paper plate or something and spray enough paint on there so you have like a little puddle of wet paint. It's gonna keep your sponge from taking all the paint out. I've already used that part, so I'm gonna use a fresh part of the sponge. Just got a little paint on there so it's kind of just moist enough so it's not gonna completely destroy your paint scheme. And you're just gonna kind of lightly dab just like that. That way it's not too much of a defined line and looks more like a shadow. So you're going to go over all the lines you just did in that kind of fashion. And with the paint, the undercoat still a little damp, it's going to really help to model these colors together. You're not trying to press too hard on this either, you're just really light taps, just enough to make it not look like well, spray paint essentially. Okay, I'm going to go over this one more time with the stencil, get a little bit more brown in there. Since it's cold, it's not in heat, I'm getting a lot of paint on there, but it's a little better. And when you do this, you're going to make sure that you curve this, that way you're not getting straight edges and squares, otherwise that's going to be a dead giveaway when you're trying to hide. Alright, that's going to complete the base of our ATAX. Alright, we've got the base coat for our ATAX finish. You can see it's pretty faded and modeled, so it's looking alright. What we're going to do now is I have a third template, and the last template you're going to need cut out just in kind of random uh, shapes, nothing too special. I just looked at a picture of ATAX online and cut out some similar shapes. What you're going to do is you're going to take kind of a forest green, not hunter's green, but a dark forest green. Good enough, and you're going to take the stencil, you're going to put it pr actually pr as close as you can get it to the thing because you want nice crisp lines instead of the standard faded look we've been going for up until now. You just want enough to cover it, not so much that you're soaking it, but just go as close as you can. It's a little faded, it's okay. I mean, it is camouflage after all. Let's try to get kind of a shape. more of an organic, you don't want anything, that's why I have so many cut out, is you don't want anything that looks too, like, patterned, I guess is the right word for that. You just want it to look as random as possible. So just do what you can as far as that goes. You don't want too many of these, well I guess depending on what kind of environment you're going for, just enough where it looks like the shadows of leaves. So that's about good right there, that's about what we're going for. The next color we're going to be using is kind of a light olive drab color. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it's a lot lighter than the dark green we're using, and that's the point. We're going to use this to create the shading to make it look uh, 3D to an extent. So you're going to do the same paper plate thing we did before. We're going to spray a puddle into this paper plate. That way you have some to dab in. But the whole technique is going to be different. We don't have any paint on here from the light green already. So we're going to get the sponge. We're going to dab it. And you want very little paint actually on the sponge. What you're going to try to do is dab it. It's not exactly enough. It's kind of tricky, but dab it inside the dark green spots to create almost a lifted texture. And you don't want to really get it too far away from the dark green because you really want to get kind of a 3D texture thing going. So this is a Real fun part to do. Again, you want to make sure you keep this sponge curved, otherwise you're going to start to get uh, very square spaces of color. up 
here. Get this last little bit. If you have to, you can use the very edge of the sponge. Just make sure that you kind of fade it after you're done. And I think that is about it. You can dab a little bit of color randomly just to kind of finish up the Atax look like where you see a little bit too much tan. Just kind of lightly put a little bit of a light green there. That'll fade it a little bit better. Alright, so that's base, your basic Atax. Now what I like to do, because it's still a little bit brown for my taste, set it back down. Um, where did I put the can? There it is. Take that same color we just used, move everything out of the back because I don't want to mess with these sponges. Keep it about two feet away from the gun and just kind of light spray. I hit a little too hard there, but that's okay. And then you can go over with the darker colors afterwards and redo those heavy areas because you can see they got faded. So what you're going to go, what you're going to do after this dries, you're going to take that stencil here again and you're going to try to get as close to those original ones as possible and redo that whole process and that's going to give you the finished green Atax look. Alright, well I'll clear coat this after I do that and I'll show you the finished product. Alright guys, this is what your finished product is going to look like when you reassemble your weapon. Keep in mind, this isn't perfect. It doesn't look exactly like Atax. Atax is a very difficult camo to reproduce, but it's about as close as you're going to get with some spray paint. The thing you'll notice about this gun as opposed to the other ones I showed at the beginning of the video is that it doesn't look as nice. It looks a little more modeled. Um, the reason for that, let me show you the M28 just for comparison real quick. The reason for that being I painted the M28 in a warm garage, nice environment for that. I painted the pistol in a cold garage. You're going to want to keep that in mind when you paint your weapons. The cold air is definitely going to affect how the paint adheres to the weapon, how it works, and everything like that. So definitely keep that in mind. But other than that, if this video helped you at all, please uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Like the video if you enjoyed it. All right, that's about sums it up. Uh, thanks for watching.